In lesson 7.2, we will graph exponential decay functions. And in these first three examples, we're going to decide if they represent exponential growth or exponential decay. Remember our equation in general is y equals a times b to the x power. And b is our base. If that base is greater than 1, that's when our equation represents exponential growth. If that b value is between 0 and 1, a fraction between 0 and 1, that's going to indicate a decay function. So all we have to do is look at the b value in our, in our equation. And b in this first function is equal to 8 fifths. And 8 fifths is greater than 1. So we know that this represents exponential growth, this function. Okay, the next function has a b value of 1 half. And because that value is between 0 and 1, we know that this function is represent, representing exponential decay. Okay, And now in the third problem, you might look at this equation and think that the base is uh, 3, the b value is 3, and expect this to represent exponential growth. But really, we have to get rid of that negative exponent. And to do that, we'd have to invert uh, 3 write its reciprocal one-third and make the exponent positive x. So f of x equals 2 times 3 to the negative x power is the same as f of x equals 2 times one-third to the x power. And now you can see that our b value is one-third, a fraction between 0 and 1. So this function represents exponential decay. Now on the next page, we're going to be graphing that function f of x equals 2 times 1 third to the x power. So we'll go ahead and, and write it as f of x equals 2 times 1 third to the x power. Okay, we're going to make a table of values. And in that table of values for x, I'm going to put negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1 and 2, and solve for y. So let's start with 0. Let's let x equal 0. 1 third to the 0 power is 1, because anything to the 0 power is 1. And 1 times 2 is 2. So our y value is 2. Now let's put 1 in for x. 1 third to the first power is just 1 third. And 1 third times 2 is 2 thirds. Putting 2 in for x, 1 third squared is 1 ninth and 1 ninth times 2 is 2 ninths. Okay, now let's go the other direction and let's put negative 1 in for x so that we have 2 times 1 third raised to the negative 1 power. Now to, again, to get rid of that negative exponent, we need to invert that fraction, write its reciprocal, and make the exponent positive 1. So we just have 3 to the first power, which is 3, and 2 times 3 is 6. So we get 6 for our y value, and now we want to let x equal negative 2. So we'll do the same thing. We'll get rid of that negative exponent first by writing 3 over 1 to the positive 2 power. 3 squared is 9, and 9 times 2 is 18. So our y value is 18. And now when I go to the graph, to graph those ordered pairs, negative 2, 18 is going to be off of my uh, coordinate plane, so I'm going to start with negative 1, 6. And then I'll graph the y-intercept of 0, 2. And I'll graph 1, 2 thirds and 2, 2 ninths. I'm getting close to that x-axis again. And again, the x-axis is going to be our asymptote, the horizontal line that this exponential decay curve approaches, gets infinitely close to but never touches. That's an asymptote. Okay, So we have the opposite here of what we were graphing before uh, in the last lesson when we were graphing exponential growth. In exponential growth, we started with a small value, took a turn, and then our values for y increase rapidly after that. Here we're starting with very large values for y, 
and we're decreasing rapidly at first, then we take our turn, and then we decrease more slowly after that. The domain for this function is again all reals, all real numbers because that exponent can be anything. It can be negative, it can be zero, it can be positive, any real number. The range, however, since it approaches that x-axis, that's its asymptote, is going to be y greater than zero. Okay, let's look at the second graph uh, on this page. Uh, we have a couple uh, values to talk about. We have a, a value of negative 4. Because a is negative, that's going to cause a reflection in this graph. And we have a, a 2 added to our um, a times b to the x power. That 2 is going to cause a shift in our horizontal asymptote uh, up 2 units. So we'll say that the horizontal asymptote shifts up two units. And of course I'm going to put that new asymptote in right away. Okay, and I'll make a table of values. In that table of values I'm going to put negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1, and solve for uh, y. So let's let x equal, let's let x equal 0 first. 2 fifths to the 0 power is 1 because anything to the 0 power is 1. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4 and negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Okay, now let's let x equal 1. 2 fifths to the first power is 2 fifths and 2 fifths times negative 4 is negative 8 fifths. And we're going to add that to 2, which we can write as 10 fifths. So when we add negative 8 fifths to positive 10 fifths, we're going to get positive 2 fifths for a y value. Okay, now let's let x equal negative 1 so that we have negative 4 times 2 fifths raised to the negative 1 power plus 2. And of course I, I need to get rid of that negative exponent, so I'll invert my fraction, write its reciprocal raised to the positive 1 power, and multiply. When I multiply, 2's are going to cancel, and I'm going to be left with negative 10. So I have negative 10 plus 2, or negative 8 for a y value. And now I'll let x equal negative 2. So I have negative 4 times 2 fifths raised to the negative 2 power this time, plus 2. Okay, so I'll get rid of that negative exponent. And then multiply. Again, um, 5 halves to the second power is going to be 25 fourths. And when I multiply that times negative 4, the 4's will cancel. So I'll just be left with negative 25, and negative 25 plus 2 is going to give us a y value of negative 23. So I'll put that in my table of values. Okay, now I'm going to graph my uh, ordered pairs negative 2, negative 23 is going to be off my graph. So the first point again that I'm going to graph is negative 1, negative 8. And my y-intercept is 0, negative 2. And my, uh, I have another point, 1, 2 fifths on this curve. Okay, so I'm going to be able to rise and travel through those points, take a sharp turn, and then follow that asymptote 
only this time because of the reflection of exponential decay I'm following that asymptote to the right below its horizontal asymptote. Okay, so domain is going to be all reals again. X can be any real number, but the range, since uh, there is an asymptote that this curve approaches and it's below that asymptote, Y is always going to be less than 2. Okay, here we're going to look at an exponential decay model y equals a times the base 1 minus r raised to the t power. We can use that in a problem uh, like this where a new car costs $23,000, the value decreases by 15% each year, write an exponential model for the car's value, then use the model to find the value of the car after three years. So we want to use our formula to write our model. y is going to be the value at any point in time. a is going to be the initial amount or initial value of this vehicle. And the rate is the rate at which it's decreasing. It's decreasing at a rate of 15 percent each year, but we want to put that in our equation as a decimal. So 15 percent is equal to 0.15. And we'll raise it to the t power. t is time in years. Okay, so now I would simplify this model that we wrote by subtracting and getting our B value of 0.85 raised to the T power. Okay, now here's our model that they wanted us to write for this vehicle that cost $23,000 in the beginning. You can see that our base is between 0 and 1, and that's going to cause exponential decay. So over time, this vehicle is going to lose values. It won't be $23,000 uh, in three years. Okay, so this vehicle is losing 15% of its value each year, but it's keeping 85% of its value each year. So all we have to do now is substitute 3 in for T to find its value after three years and use our calculator. So run that through your calculator. 0.85 raised to the third power first and then multiply by 23,000. So I'm getting a value for this vehicle after three years of only Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 2 through 8 even on pages 487 and 488 of your textbook.